What's going on YouTube? Andy here, Cotton Clean Lawn Care. First and foremost, guys, if you want to pick up some shirts, I've been creating some shirts randomly on my Teespring because if you're not trying to make money, what are you doing? Yeah, I got some shirts up on there, just some different little things I came up with to collaborate for the Keep Mowing song and some other stuff. If you guys want to check those out, please do. Don't feel obligated to buy anything by any means, but if you want to check them out, feel free to check them out. Link's in the description. And real quick, I just want to touch on one of the topics from my earlier videos. A lot of you guys were commenting on the blades because I said I've been using these extreme high lift blades they're by usa blades i don't have part numbers if you want to check them out go on amazon and type in extreme high lift blade and you'll probably find them that's what i did and then i also use the skag high lift blades these blades are my go-to i don't think i necessarily explained that the right way so here are seasons change constantly so if i need something to really give me that good suction and really get the grass sucked up to cut it, I'm gonna go with these high lift blades. But throughout the majority of this season, I would say 75% of the time, I'm running these stock Skag high lift blades. Reason being, before you guys go out and purchase these extreme high lift blades by USA Blades, do notice they are a wider blade, which means more material. More material means heavier. I notice these blades. I notice it on the Skag, I notice it on the Gravelys. It bogs down the engine a lot. You will notice the weight difference in these blades, so I try not to run them constantly. But if you have a big mower with a huge engine where it doesn't even notice it, I'm sure you'll be fine. But like I said, the majority of the season, I'm running the Skag High Lift Blades. They work great in my area. I like having to start the morning off with a little disclaimer to help prevent you guys from destroying all your machines. And B, I forgot my keys, so I can't even get into my truck. And C, what are you listening to me for anyways? I'm just some dude that cuts grass. My opinions don't matter. So I got this nice little racking system for all my trimmers and blowers and stuff, but when a guy puts all the mowers in the garage first, he just sets everything on the ground. So I got that mess I'm dealing with. Gotta go on the trailer. And a lot of you guys are interested in the old Project Skag here, so let's talk Project Skag for a little bit. Uh, like I said in videos before, I think I finally got the deck issues solved as far as being able to level and control this deck the way I need to. What else did I do? Not much. I need to heat this exhaust up somehow. I don't know if there's someone local that has that stuff because I want to get it even again. I hate the way that it's kind of crooked and cockeyed. It drives me nuts. And I still got that light bar thing on the front that I may take off because... I don't know. I actually think it's kind of dumb, to be honest with you. I just threw it on there because it was sitting in the garage. But yeah, as all the minor things and even major things are pretty much done, except for one wheel motor seal, welds are all done and they're primed. The deck is a mess. But guys, I do have some stuff coming. I got some parts coming from Skag. I have the other spindle cover nuts bolts things like that that i need but i have a couple cans of skaggs cat's eye gold paint coming along with some matte black car paint because what i'm going to do is kind of mix it up i want to make this thing my own so as you can see in a fit of boredom i did paint that top uh what do you want to call that spindle covers like this whole top plate right here i painted it black with some paint i had in the garage i'm going to redo it and paint it black the way i want to but I like the orange and black contrast, so I think I'm actually going to paint both the front wheels black and I'm going to paint the back wheels black as well to go with the spindle covers and the rest of it I'm just going to do with the original Skag orange because I like the black and orange and I think that'll look pretty good. I ain't going to try to enter this thing in a car show by any means. I'm just going to try to fix all the stuff the best I can so a light coat of paint will go a long way from a distance. I want this thing to have not a 10 foot paint job. I want this thing to have a 50 foot paint job. You see this thing from 50 foot away, you're going to go, that's a brand new Skag. When you get up close to it, you're going to go, oh dear. And also after research, I may get a new uh, waist rest. This little pad here is destroyed. I got it covered in some black Gorilla tape, but those are only like a hundred bucks. I mean, it's really not that big of a deal. So I may buy a new one of those because a new pad on it probably make it look pretty good as well. The other thing I'm really excited about from how much I've had this thing cleaned at the end of last year, 
I see no remnants of any oil leakage under the motor, under the pumps, anywhere. So the fact that this thing isn't leaking at all anywhere after sitting in my garage for about a year is pretty exciting to me, especially when the machine has 2,773 hours on the machine itself and about 450 on the motor. I also don't know if I even talked about this at all, but I have this spot right here on my uh, throttle cable on the steel BR700 that always rubbed up against my rack and it started to cut through that plastic. So I took it off and I have it all taped up and sealed and ready to go. But the issue I ran into when having to take this cover off, my spark plug wire was like welded to this spark plug. I could not get it off. The only way I was able to get it off was to give it some heat but the cable was already snapped right here at the bottom. All those parts and whatnots over here, I got that ordered. Feldman should have that in. I just thought that was crazy, man. I've never had a spark plug wire like stuck to a spark plug to the point that I couldn't pull it off. Part's not expensive or anything. Just kind of a headache, it's stupid. I don't know if you guys have ever ran into that before, but God, just dumb. Every now and then you'll have those days. If it's not one thing, it's another. But racks are up. Equipment's up. Racks were already up anyways. Equipment's up. Blower's up. Mower's on the trailer. Music around the neck. Hat on the head. Water in the truck. Gas cans in the truck as well. Let's go mow. I can't promise I'm going to get you a bunch of mowing footage because that's what I do, man. I get to the property. I put the brakes on. Hop out of the truck and I get to work. A lot of times I forget to grab this. So I'm going to try. If I still used the GoPro, I would probably just slap it on stuff more often, which I may do. I may just buy another GoPro just to do these kind of videos for the vlog stuff. But today we got this. Let's get to mowing. I'm going to try to knock out 15. We got rain coming in, which will leave me if an easy Friday, easy Saturday, whatever day it comes to, and just finish out this week. So let's get to it. Something else you guys may not know, I got this tiny little house right here that's always had this tiny little backyard. But something else your guy did is he eliminated the push mower off his trailer. I got work I need to do. The more properties I can do in the quickest amount of time, the more money I'm going to make for my business. So eliminating the push mower was one of the main things I needed to do. And these people I do a couple houses for, and they were nice enough to put a bigger gate in the back so I didn't have to run a push mower anymore. I can now run the 36 back there. So let's mow this property. So yeah guys, there you go. New gate, was able to slide on into the back with the 36. 36 does a better job on cut quality and dispersing grass than that push mower did. So we're getting a better cut quality. But this is something I've actually done with previous clients before, depending on what needs to be done. Hey, if you want to continue me as a service, this is what's changing in my company. Have to get a bigger gate size. You can even come up with options like, hey, if you sign up for an entire year, or you sign up for next year as well. I'll go ahead and do this gate, pay for it myself, blah, 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 or split the cost with them. So if you're in a predicament where you're running big mowers, but you want some of these yards, there's options out there to get them. But all I did was just kind of drive it home. Hey, I apologize, but I'm just getting rid of the push mower off my trailer. If you want to continue services with me, which I would love for you to, I'm just going to need to be able to fit at least a 36 inch mower. Some of these people have no problem doing that because they may want a bigger gate themselves to move stuff around in the backyard. So those options are out there, guys. Let's move on. So I was just mowing this house right back here and I had a company alongside me mowing the neighbor's property and they did something I can't stand. They got wheel marks of grass all over the driveway and sidewalk. That stuff drives me nuts, man. You guys can avoid doing that. Everybody can avoid doing that. It may take a hair longer. You may have to run a different pattern. But if the grass is wet, man, and someone's paying for that service, don't trample it all over their freaking driveway and sidewalk, man. It looks horrible. And you might be thinking to yourself, Andy, why does that bother you? 
It doesn't bother me from a lawn care service point of view. Uh, anybody can go do whatever they want to. I think of it from like a homeowner's standards. So if I was paying a company to service my lawn and I came home and I just had grass and wheel marks and zero turn spots all over my driveway and sidewalk, I don't think I'd be a happy camper, man. It's like if the plumber came to your house to fix the toilet, but less, left the poo water all over the place. Fix the toilet, but now I gotta clean up all this water everywhere. <sighs> all right guys, I'm back. I've mowed quite a few since the last time we have spoke together. I just finished this one back here. I'll slide in a little video clip from my phone of the backyard. The stripes look on point. let's just keep it moving but before we keep it moving I want to give a shout out to Jocko Willink check out Jocko podcast if you guys haven't ex Navy SEAL he's been through it all man and dude I am enjoying listening to his podcast he'll go through some excerpts of books from World War One World War two reenactments of people's memories and war it's just a really cool humbling and grounding podcast Especially if you feel like your life's down and out, you got to listen to some of the stories these people talk about. And I can't even imagine what a lot of these people went through. And that's going to break down one of these moments right here. Shout out to anyone active in the military who has served the military, veterans, our people on the front line at home, our nurses, our EMTs, firefighters, police, you name it, the people that protect our freedoms and all that stuff. I want to give a shout out to every single one of you guys. I appreciate what all you do to let me continue to do the things that I do. And it's it's awesome, man. It's very humbling listening to the Jocko podcast. If you guys haven't, check it out. Jocko podcast. Then also, again, to retouch on something, because I don't know if I explained it correctly when I was in my garage, talking about the difference between those extreme high lift blades and the regular high lift blades. The reason I even want to give you some sort of warning, I don't even know if I explained it correctly, is because of the bogging down of the engine and the bogging down of the machine. Not saying the blades will or will not work for you. What I'm saying is they will cause wear and tear on your machine and most likely hinder the lifespan of said machine. So keep that in mind if you do run those blades because that's the reason I don't run them all year round because when I switch back to my skag high lift blades the, the machines perform flawlessly but with those extreme high lift you can notice them bogging down and the other thing that's driving the guy crazy besides the fact that I need to shave really bad is the people just leaving stuff everywhere it was one thing when it was like Big Mac boxes and McDonald's cups blowing around picking up trash that's fine but now I'm dealing with all these latex gloves from this coronavirus thing everywhere. And if you think I'm picking up your coronavirus gloves, you are sadly mistaken. Quit littering. Throw your stuff away, man. No one wants to deal with your problems. You need to deal with your problems. You got latex gloves? Don't throw them in the street. Throw them away home. You got your mask on? <laughs> throw it away. Because I ain't picking it up, man. Quit littering your stuff. We're all dealing with this. Last thing I want to do is deal with your stuff on top of m -m -m my stuff. Next property. So every now and then, people ask me like, why do I do lawn maintenance? Why, am, why do I mow? Why do I do this? And I'll kind of explain this. I go through it throughout my day, man. There's, there's multiple reasons. Just being on the mower, popping the headphones in, listening to podcasts, listening to whatever, motivation, music. It's therapeutic. It's relaxing to me. I enjoy doing it. The other thing is I'm able to still be creative in some sorts. So you take a clean slate, 
that is a lawn that's never been mowed by you before. When you're done with it, it has stripes, it has personality in a way, if you want to call it that. Edges, trimmed up, and it looks good. You're able to take something, be creative, and transform it into something else. Same reason I do this stuff, same reason I do video editing, and I have been doing video editing stuff since I was like 14 years old back in the skateboard days. It's taking all this accumulated stuff, whatever it is, this footage, and trying to tell a story through it. Throw in some things in that make it entertaining or whatever. I just love being creative, and there's something about this that, that fulfills that need for me. For you, it might just be getting out there, bumping out 185 yards in a day and making a ton of money. For me, it's just a coast, man. I, I know what I can do, I do it, I don't wanna feel overwhelmed, and I just go throughout my day being me, doing my own thing. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. I enjoy being me, but uh, yeah, that's kind of why I do it. I feel like there's an end goal. Same thing with this video. If I just threw this video up raw, it wouldn't make any sense and it would be all over the place. But when it's done and edited, it kind of tells a story. And that's what's fun about either YouTube, making videos, editing, and lawn care. I'm able to take something that is what it is and turn it into something else. And that's fun. At this segment right here, if there's clicking going on in the camera, it's because I got my Bluetooth going, audio interference, blah, blah, blah. I got a couple more I need to get done in this neighborhood. I'm just going to go ahead and mow them. I don't feel like filming all this stuff. When I get back home, I have a couple properties in my neighborhood. I may get the skag out, mow those. I may mow my yard, I don't know, and may do some filming with the skag when I get home and throw it in this video too. So let's get these done and get home. See, I did what I normally did. I went and mowed a couple neighboring properties with this and didn't film a thing, because that's what I do. I just get to work. But I got a little bit of footage of it mowing my yard real quick. Thing still stripes really good, cuts okay. It's still mohawking a little bit on the deck edges. So I gotta get that figured out as well. So yeah, not much to it, just out mowing today, man. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today, man. If you guys are on lockdown, I'm sorry. Sorry to all you guys that aren't able to work. Still sorry about that as well. Again, a shout out to all the people that protect us and what we are doing. But if I can end it on any kind of note, I'm going to say, hey, you guys are supposed to be on lockdown. If you're wearing your rubber gloves, you're wearing your masks and stuff, awesome. Throw that stuff away. I don't want to pick it up. Nobody else wants to pick it up. Quit littering. You know what I'm saying? Ridiculous. But yeah, guys, I got to finish all this stuff up. I got to trim and edge all this. We got rain coming in, so I want to get done. I want to get all this put up so I can hang out with my kid because that's what I want to do. But thanks for hanging out today, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'm serious about that. Like the video, okay? Comment because I, I would just like to hear what you got to say. If you got something nice and positive to say, I may pin it up at the top. You guys know the routine. And like always, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't. It is much appreciated. You know, channel growth, things like that. <sighs> I'm going to have to edit this video. So we'll see you guys in the next one. Later.